My name is Ade Osenia Rebite. I work for Fenimi. I'm a director of information security. And my partner here is Raj Patije. He's a fellow of information security also at Fenime. Fenime is a, a mortgage provider that supports our banks and other financial services that provision mortgages. For this talk, we're going to just talk about, you know, a little bit of our history, well, why we choose AWS, and what data protection service utilize on AWS. Some of the requirements for our data protection, and why and how we solve this problem. Moving on quickly, Fannie Mae has been in existence since 1938. And our primary focus is to help homeowners secure mortgages for their homes, to help renters to secure rental properties, and home buyers and home sellers. So we're in the secondary market. Our goal is to provide liquidity to the market so that banks can afford to loan um, financial information, financial data to renters and to buyers. To do so, we collect a lot of mortgage data, and to make sure this data is secure, our goal is to make sure that during our cloud journey, we want to make sure this data is well protected. How do we do that? We had a lot of requirements. We want to make sure that the application workloads are secure, the identities are protected in every life cycle. We want to make sure that uh, we can provision application in a simplified manner, focusing on automation, right? We wanted to reduce the burden on application admins and system administrators when they provision application workloads, right? We wanted to make sure data that we a secure burden transit and address. We wanted to make sure we leverage least privilege access for all of our application and for application admins, right? And we also want to make sure that we, our data is resilient across region because we serve our mortgages nationwide. Right? To do all of these, some, these are some of the requirements, right? To make sure that our workloads are protected and the data that they that leverage is also protected. Right? Furthermore, as part of our goal, we looked at how do we secret, how do we secure all these secrets that application workload leverages, right? to manage data. How do we do that? We want to make sure that every workload, identity, and credential is automatically vaulted as soon as they are provisioned. Secondly, we want to build automation so that we can reduce the need for admins to manually create identities and manually change passwords for applications. We want to make sure our life cycles are segregated, right? We only want applications that need to do data exchange with another application, that they only those applications are send data, right? We want to make sure that application admins only need the privilege to do their work, including application workload themselves. So we focus a lot on least privilege use, right? AWS promised a lot of our low cost, so we wanted to leverage a pay-as-you-go process so that we don't need to spin off application workload unless we need to, right? And of course, like I said earlier on, we want to make sure as soon as application is provisioned, we can also provision all the secrets in another region in case there's a disaster in one region, right? Raj is one of our principal fellows here at Fannie Mae, and part of his goal was to design this workload and to architect this solution in a secure manner. So I'm going to pass it over to Raj to talk about some of these design principles and some of the solutions that we have to lay over. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, Ade. So as you heard, when your workload moves to the cloud, the, your security posture, what you had in your on-prem environment versus the cloud are completely different. And as, as, as and when you start using the native applications or native services in the cloud or cloud native application, your application start using more APIs, the, the management of the secrets, the access to these particular resources, managing those access, the secrets are very, very important. So let's talk about uh, some of the solutions, what 
from the secret management, you know, we use in Fannie Mae, we use AWS Secret Manager to manage all kinds of secrets. The secrets from the AWS RDS, secrets from the AWS Redshift, the secrets from your regular databases, which is maybe hosted in your EC2s, API keys, client ID, client secrets, your license keys, your certificates. You need to secure, manage, rotate them in a very safe and sound manner. To do that one, we use AWS Secret Manager. Some of the design consideration, what you need to account when you're, when you're talking about the secret management is the, the namespace. You need to create a namespace for the secret. So that way, when you grant the access to the, your workloads, you can give a proper vertical access in your AWS accounts. This is a very key important uh, uh, design consideration you have to make, uh, account for. The second thing, when you look into the, the secret management, the first of all, it is not just a secret rotation. How does that, what is the life cycle of that secret? When do you need that secret? For example, your, your application developers may be uh, deploying an RDS instance or a Redshift instance for their workload. So your enterprise services may need access. The service accounts need to be provisioned in those particular uh, databases. How that can be streamlined. So what we do is we do the event-driven the lifecycle management of these secrets. As soon as the a resource pops up in the environment, we have the events kicking, as you see in the diagram, the event bridge kicks in and we, we enrich that event, and based on that event, we provision the required service accounts. Not just we provision the service accounts, we automatically onboard those particular credential into the secret manager in the right namespace. By doing so, the respective services and the applications have automatic access to those particular credentials, uh, what is stored in the secret manager via the IAM role. In addition to that one, you need to protect that secret itself. To do that one, we use the encryption, uh, AWS KMS-based encryption. Uh, that encryption is again application-specific KMS key will be used. It's not like a one KMS key across the board. What is the benefit you are going to get? Again, think about the vertical segmentation of your access. Secret is vertically segmented. Your encryption is vertically segmented. So you get the double layer of the protection from that particular secret. Now, another important uh, functionality in our environment, what we do is, as you see, there are a lot of credentials needed which are not AWS. Think about a service account which is needed. Your client ID, client secret, which is needed for your API calls or API key itself. These are all not AWS resources. These are coming from your enterprise identity management system probably, as you see on the bottom of the bottom in the diagram. So these credentials are automatically onboarded into the secret manager in that namespace what we talked about. By doing so, advantage is application team doesn't need to uh, work on these low level things. They can focus on the application problem solved versus, you know, you already delivered this credential in a safe and sound manner for them to consume at runtime. So then another important uh, functionality in our environment is what we, what, we, what we have is we do have hybrid workloads. The workloads are not only running in AWS. There are workloads maybe in your on-prem environment. There are workloads maybe in your multi-cloud environment. How are you going to access that one? You need to build the right strategy and solution again you could use the, for example, AWS IAM role anywhere functionality by which you should be able to get that secrets. Now, it's not enough you have the secrets stored in your secret manager. You need to rotate them in an automated fashion. So that way you know that even if that secret is compromised, it is not a permanent secret anymore. So you need to have a right strategy for secret rotation. AWS secret manager provides you out of the box capabilities you could also customize for your need for that one. In our environment, we do have the, the both combinational things. We use the out-of-the-box as well as a custom secret rotation functionality. As you see, the, the top lam lambda over there showing the secret management is the one what is going to do the secret rotation automatically storing into the secret. Then there are use cases. You may have a COTS environment or COTS product in your environment. They don't know how to talk to the secret manager. You need the secret to be ingested into their environment. So what we did is, with this event-driven architecture, we can provide them the event so that those COTS products can subscribe to that event to pull the secret and ingest into that product. So that way the secret goes into the product in a safe and sound manner without going through the emails or any other means. 
In addition to all this, this one, you can think about how can you simplify the adoption of the secret integration. One of the key functionality in our environment, what we did is we wrote the SDK overlap. With the SDK overlap, what we are doing is we are not just using the AWS SDK as is. For example, let's say you have a Java application deployed in an environment. What, how does your Java application generally connect to the, the your database? It is through JDBC. So what we wrote is we wrote a JDBC wrapper which talks to the secret manager, pulls the secret at runtime whenever there is a connection required and establish the connection. If you want the, the something, if you, if you don't have this kind of implementation by yourself or no, you don't have expertise, you could refer to one of the GitHub rep, uh, repo where AWS started posting some of these things under AWS slash AWS secret managers dash JDBC. If you go, you shall able to get the reference implementation for yourself too. So this, with this one, we talked about the, all this access, the secrets, protection of the secret. As I said, it's not enough having a secret in secret manager. You need to protect that one. You need to encrypt that one. So let's move on to the, the next aspect of the things, what you need to look in this uh, securing the data is how we need to protect the data uh, in the environment by encrypting. So let's talk about what are the, some of the key requirement for the key management. Number one requirement is uh, we want to encrypt the data in, at rest, data in motion, as well as uh, the enable all the services which support the AWS uh, KMS. So this is the one of the requirement in our environment. By default, they may not be required, but we made in our environment it is required. How did you do that one? So basically, we will talk about that when you go to the solution. Now you may have some of the the very highly sensitive crown jewel attribute. You may not be sufficient to do just a server-side encryption. Whatever you want to do the attribute level encryption, you shall able to leverage the client-side encryption, the capability what the KMS provides. And uh, most importantly, all these key management point of view, you need to automate them, auto-rotate them. Luckily, the AWS provides you the ability to the auto-rotation capability. You don't need to do anything by yourself. Just enable that feature, which will take care of it. Another important use case you may have, and in, in, in our this one is, uh, what about this encryption key need to be available in multiple regions? Because your workload may be running today in one region, tomorrow it may need to run in another region. So what if, if there is a issue in a region one, and you want to go to the region two for whatever reason, you need this key, encrypted key to be available. Consider using the multi-region KMS keys in, in, for those kind of workloads. So, as, is, as I said, we have a workload-specific KMS keys. It is not like one KMS key. And wherever possible, leverage the, the CMK, Customer Managed KMS key. AWS Services comes with the Service Managed keys. By doing the service managed key, you will able to encrypt the server-side encryption for that particular data. But what you will miss in that one is you will not able to manage the access control based on the KMS key. By using the, the CMK, you shall able to manage the access to the KMS key along with the data access. So again, as I said in the secret scenario, you have a double protection from the access point of view. Even if one misses, you have the other one protecting. So think about the S3 scenario. If I have an, S3, an object sitting in an S3 bucket, and that S3 bucket is, if it is exposed to the, the internet, the server-side encryption is only the server-side encryption. It doesn't need any additional permission. That object is still available in the internet. On the other hand, if you use the CMK, the CMK permission, without the permission, you cannot access that data. Even if the object is exposed to the internet, it's just a garbage. So consider the CMK. Uh, the other uh, thing is, you shall able to bring, you know, the, we also use uh, bring your own key, especially with the third party products when we are using, you can ask those vendors saying that, can I use my key to encrypt the data in those services? So that you can manage the KMS key in your account, which is accessed by those services to encrypt your data in those services from there in that account. So these are all the, the controls you should be able to use. In addition to that, the attribute level encryption, as I said, we also use a third-party product to do the tokenization 
in addition to the client side encryption. In some scenarios, we need a format preserved encryption is required, so that we do use some third party solution. It's not just the client side encryption what we are having. Now let's look into the another aspect of the end the protect your data end to end. Data in motion, data in transit, and data at store, right? So how are you going to protect this one from the end to end point of view? Think about you know the, your channel encryption, right? So to do that one, we leverage, you know, the, we have the certificate requirement. We shall able to create, store, uh, and renew the public and private certificates, which is used for uh, the TLS, MTLS, code signing, and various other use cases. And we shall able to manage those keys. Provide the certificate to integrate with, for the AWS services. Think about the AWS service, such as your load balancers, cloud fronts, depending on what you are using. So you should be able to integrate that certificates with those services. Ability to export this internal certificate for your uh, the internal PKI systems. So you may have the use cases, hybrid use cases. It may not be just the AWS services. Think about the end-to-end -end protection point of view. In your architecture, if you think that you have, you have the load balancer, you have a compute on the back end, you want to encrypt all the way to the compute, you need that certificate to be available to the, your compute layer too not just at the load balancer level. And third party, you know, the, the certificate integration, especially the, you know, we have a use case where we are segregating the PA, the private, uh, the, the, the certificate authority for internal cert and the public cert separate, so that way, you know, we could import the public cert from the external party, third party into uh, the, the certificate store. And in addition to all these things, you need to think about governance and compliance. So that's a very important requirement. So with that one, let's see how we are doing that particular thing. We still use our internal, uh, a third party product, what we are using to do the compliance and governance. On top of it, we are leveraging the AWS ACM, the certificate manager, as well as the private CA itself. Why it's important to use both of them is because we are using the third party to manage that uh, governance and compliance. So we directly integrate with the AWS private CA rather than leveraging the AWS ACM to manage the cert. So if you don't have that scenario, you can go to the ACM directly and ACM can provision the certificate for you. As you see, the, from an architecture point of view, we have a, a two-tier uh, CA infrastructure consisting of the root cert, intermediate cert. For all our internal use cases, we use AWS uh, CA, uh, the private CA for those particular things. And uh, several use cases, as I said, we, we have the certificate ACM integration for AWS native services, and we have the, the code signing MTLS search for our workloads, internal workloads, which are not AWS services, which may be our own workloads, so we use that particular case one. And the other important thing is it also supports, and for example, if you have an Active Directory, you want that certificate to be needed for that one, so you shall able to use the subordinate CA along with the AWS CA. We use that one in our environment. So with that, I'll hand it over to Ade to do the conclusion on what we have learned and uh, the, our journey to this <clears> one. <throat> Thank you, Raj. Now, we use a whole lot more of uh, AWS services than this field that we just talked about. But what was our lesson learned throughout this journey? Automation is hard. Our application team are used to managing their own secrets. And as we move them to the cloud, we say, let's help you remove this need for you to worry about. I need to rotate my credential. If the credential is compromised, we want to re quickly re remediate it. By building this automation and leveraging Secret Manager, we were able to enable a lot of this application workload to be streamlined. So for example, an application may have 50 to 60 secrets across the environment. An application admin now have to worry about all of these identities they need to manage for this application. And if that application needs to share data with another application, they need access across that application. Now, how do we do all of this? We have to build this automation, and we didn't have a lot of opportunity to leverage some of these AWS native services in Secret Manager because it was a journey for AWS as well. I know we're running out of time, but one other takeaway that I wanted to make sure everybody understand is there are opportunities to streamline 
your process as you move your workload from on-prem into AWS. And you should talk to your AWS services and talk to them about your need and your requirement. They may not have the solution today, but they continue to work with us as we you know, continue on this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you.